The last tool we're going to talk about is a tool for creating secondary dynamic animation for characters and objects using dynamic joint chains. Make Joints Dynamic allows us to connect things like hair and end cloth to a series of joint chains. So in this example I've got a basic joint chain and I want to make part of it dynamic. So I'm going to select a joint and then I'm going to shift select the end joint from that. Now I'm going to go in and apply a hair driver and I'll just use the default settings here and apply and what you'll see is if I push play I get a subtle motion with my joint chain. So without any inherent or initial motion I don't really have much secondary motion to see. So what I can do is grab the base of this joint chain and I can go into interactive playback mode. Now while I'm in interactive playback mode I can actually use my transform or rotate manipulators to test the behavior of this dynamic chain. So for instance if I go into rotate mode I can actually rotate this as though it were something like a tail or a ponytail on a character. So this is the basic behavior I would get. If I wanted to refine this I can actually go in grab the handle here and it will give me a series of parameters that control things like the stiffness, the amount of gravity, damping, and friction. So for instance if I give this a negative gravity and I go back in and push play as I give this uh, a negative value, say negative 5, then that's going to behave more like a balloon. So if I go back in this time and I go into interactive playback mode, as I begin to test this behavior, you can see now it's behaving more like a balloon and less like a tail because the gravity is actually pulling it upward. So using a practical example, we'll use this orc zombie character which is carrying a chain that he's going to attack somebody with and if I play this you can see that's just a rigid kind of static chain with no motion. So I'll rewind to the beginning of my animation. I'll grab the base of the chain and shift select the end effector of the chain and I'll once again apply a hair dynamic to that. Now when I play this back you can see the chain does indeed react with secondary motion. Using the same tool, we can also create a series of dynamic chains if we wanted to create more of a panel effect. So here you can see I have this creature carrying a flag in his mouth. If I actually hide the skeleton here, uh, you can actually see there that the character is indeed moving and deforming, but the flag that's in his mouth is just very rigid. So I'm going to rewind this, and I'm going to select the joint chains in order. One, two, three, four, and five. Now I'm going to go in and apply, instead of a hair for the driver, I'm going to try uh, apply a multi-chain in cloth. So with this, I have a couple of options. I can use stretchy IK, I can use per joint IK, or I can use spline IK. So I'll start with the default method, and I'll simply apply that. Now I have the option also of colliding. For instance, if I want the cloth to collide with his foot, for now I'll just set it to no collisions. You can also see here that I get a grayscale representation of the falloff so that I can actually control how much influence the uh, dynamics have over the length of the chain. Now when I play this back, what you'll see is a dynamic object that will react to the environment around it, or rather it will react to the motion, but it's not currently reacting to the environment. The properties of the dynamic object can be edited as well. So if we select it, you can see it becomes a cloth object in the attribute editor, and I can apply a given preset to this. For instance, I can make this a stretchy material, like a rubber sheet. So I'll apply that, and now when I play this back, I'll get a much stretchier behavior in the cloth. Now you can see it actually even steps on it and stretches it out, and then it releases and, and kind of expands and contracts like elastic. Ultimately, after refining the behavior, I can bake out the animation, the dynamic animation, as either a cache or I can actually bake it out to the joints so that the joints will just have basic keyframes on them in the case of potentially exporting it to an engine, for instance, for a game. Here you can see the actual end result driving not only the joints but also the resulting mesh.